Well, some pro-life Democrats may feel crowded out of the big tent as they try to find a place in the party. Yeah, this is Democratic presidential candidates like Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg tell voters to make no mistake, Democrats are pro-choice. I am a proud pro-life Democrat. So do you want the support of pro-life Democrats, pro-life Democratic voters? There are about 21 million of us. But I'm not going to try to earn your vote by tricking you. Uh, I am pro-choice. And I believe that a woman ought to be able to make that decision. I think being pro-choice is an absolutely essential part of being a Democrat. Well, Amy Klobuchar has a different, more inclusive sounding take. I am strongly pro-choice. I have always been pro-choice, um, but I believe we're a big tent party, and there are pro-life Democrats, um, and they are part of our party, and I think we need to build a big tent. I think we need to bring people in instead of shutting them out. And here now for more is the woman who got all of this started, pitching that first question you saw to Pete Buttigieg over whether there's room in the party for pro-life Democrats. Kristen Day is the executive director of Democrats for Life of America, and she joins us now. Kristen, good to have you. Thanks for being here. Oh, thank you so much for having this discussion. Uh, so, you know, you say in a recent uh, USA Today op-ed that pro-life Democrats are getting pushed out by the party, uh, by abortion extremists. Uh, that's our big question here. Is there room in the big tent party for people like you who are pro-life? There absolutely should be. But the problem is that the platform has gotten to a point where there's no room for uh, people like me because it says there's an unequivocal support for abortion up to time, nine months, and taxpayers will pay for it. Uh, we were successful in prior platform processes to get language that was more inclusive and that left room for pro-life Democrats, but this current language that was passed in 2016 leaves no room. And so right now, there's an opportunity to rewrite that platform language, because we rewrite it every four years. So we're really pushing for that language to be changed and to make it inclusive for people like me. Kristen, in that clip where you asked Buttigieg about his stance, uh, he was honest and said he didn't want to trick you. He himself insisted that he was a pro-choice Democrat, but seemed to dodge your question over whether there's room in the party for pro-life Democrats. Uh, what did you think of his answer? I think the most interesting part about his answer was he was speaking about his position on abortion, but that's not what I asked. I never asked where he stood on his what stood on the issue itself, because quite clearly I knew where he stood. I knew he was pro-choice. I knew that he supported abortion rights. That wasn't the question. The question was, does he think there's room for people like me and Governor John Bell Edwards and all these pro-life Democrats around the country, and would he entertain rewriting the platform language to make it more inclusive for everybody? And you know, the, the answer appeared to be no. Is this uh, what seems to be unwavering support of abortion a new stance for the Democratic Party? You know, it's been gradually getting worse and worse with every platform written since 1976 was when, when it was first introduced into the platform. We had success in, uh, with President Obama his first term in adding language that focused more on support for pregnant women and giving women more choices uh, other than abortion and trying to find, you know, reduce abortion in America. And we were we added that language, but the abortion industry, but they were so upset with that that they added that there was an unequivocal support for abortion in the Democratic platform, and that has stayed there since then. It's this unequivocal, so there's no question about where the Democratic Party stands on it. So it's just gradually gotten worse and worse, and I think we're at a point now where we have to make a stand and say either you are a big tent party that will include people like me, or you aren't. And so I think this is an important election for pro-life Democrats, in particular, to let their voices be heard, ask the candidates the question where they stand on abortion, and do they think that there's room in the party for people who don't necessarily think abortion should be anything to be celebrated. Uh, Senator Amy Klobuchar, she does take a more inclusive stance on that. Uh, does her response to this issue, does, does it suffice for you? You know, I think it's a step in the right direction, but again, they're words. So what are the actions? What act what steps will she take to make those words be true? Because anybody can say those words like, oh, yes, we're a big tent party. Um, you know, Nancy Pelosi has said we're a big tent, tent party. But, you know, we have the uh, Democratic Association of Attorney Generals 
applying a litmus test. Well, they will not support pro-life Democratic candidates. Um, we have Act Blue, which is a big fundraising site for Democrats. They won't let Democrats for Life of America raise money on the site, even though the PAC wanted to raise money for pro-life Democratic candidates, Democrat candidates who are pro-life. So uh, it, well, it, there's got, there has to be some steps taken to really lay out a, a clear space for pro-life Democrats to vote their conscience on this issue.